And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, our Lord is good and he is faithful and it is good to be gathered together with his people. We are so glad that you are here today. If you are a guest with us, we're just so glad that, uh, that you've joined us today, whether in person or online. And um, just a few announcements as we begin. I am not Pastor Ron, in case you were wondering. Um, Pastor Ron, he, is, uh, he has uh, been under the weather this week. Um, he actually, he went to the doctor on Friday, um, had just really not been feeling well, had a, uh, a COVID test that came back negative. Um, he wanted me to make sure I shared that with you to uh, uh, put everybody's mind at ease. But he's still not feeling well, so he is at home this morning. Pastor Kevin's going to be uh, bringing the word for us here in just a few minutes. Thank you, brother. Um, a, a, a few other things. Uh, we're going to be having a church conference on November 1st after the morning service. So uh, directly after the service that morning on November 1st is our church conference. Um, we're going to have a little uh, schedule adjustment to our prayer meeting. Uh, we will not be having prayer meeting tonight. We'll be having, the next time we'll be having prayer meeting will be on November 1st at 6 o'clock. And we are going to be once a month, the first Sunday of the month, we'll be having our prayer meeting. So that, that is uh, going to be the, the schedule that we're moving to. And, um, and then uh, this month's missions emphasis is Operation Christmas Child. And if, uh, if you would like to become a part of that, um, there, are, there are boxes out this uh, side in the back that you can pick up. All the instructions are inside the box to be able to help you. Uh, be able to participate with that. And we're going to be watching a video here uh, in, in just a moment, but I wanted to share that, make, make sure you were aware of that. Um, there's still opportunity to get involved in our, uh, in our fall festival family fun night. I, I think I got at least three out of the four, four words right. Um, but uh, that's coming up on October the 28th. And, uh, and there are cards that are on the, on the uh, tables in the back that you can fill out, um, to be able to fill out, uh, let us know how you can help fill some of the needs that we have, as well as for the journey to Bethlehem, there are cards that are in the back as well for you to be able to, to sign up to, to be able to participate and, and help us as we uh, share the love of Jesus with our community. Uh, let's have a word of prayer together, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll watch our Operation Christmas Child video. And Father God, we are in awe of your great, great goodness. God, you, we, we, the, the, the simple prayer of a child, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our foot. God, God you are, the, the, the profundity of that prayer, God, you are great. There is none like you. There is no power that rivals you, God. There is, there, is, there is nothing, no one who can compare to your awesome might. And yet, God, you are so, so good. There has never been anyone who, who has loved like you have loved. And God, we are just so thankful for, for that, to know that you are both great and you are good, that you are faithful and that you are capable of taking care of your children. And uh, God, so even right now, we want to lift up to you, our pastor. God, just we pray that you would um, bring your hand of healing upon him. God, that, uh, that, that he would know that you, are, that you are over him, that you are in control. Um, and, and, and God, that that you would just bring restoration to his body. Um, God, we, we pray for, for so many who, uh, who are, are struggling physically um, uh, at this time, whether, whether they're uh, related to the pandemic or, or not, God, uh, struggling emotionally. Um, God, just the, the wear of, uh, of this time and the wear of living in a fallen world. Um, uh, God, and that through it all, that, that we would set our face toward you, to glorify you, to make your name great, to testify 
of your faithfulness. For we know that when we find ourselves in a pit, it is nothing more than an opportunity for you to show how awesome you are. So, Lord God, we come to you and we, and we lift your name. Lord, speak to our hearts, change our lives. Um, God, be transformative in your, in your work in us, God. We don't want to just be part of another service and another, uh, a, another fun time with one, with one another, but God, uh, truly that you would, you would do life, life change in us. Um, God, we love you and we praise you. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. It all begins with you. With you and your family packing shoebox gifts. <laughs> Choosing the perfect items, including a letter, and of course, a family photo. But it doesn't stop there. The shoebox gifts you pack bring joy to children all over the world. At the count of three, when children open the shoeboxes, they are so excited. You see the joy in their faces. Those faces transform, and you see the joy. Yeah, these kids behind me are so excited because they've just received their boxes. The mouth is wide open, the voice is raised, smiles are all over. That box brings joy. We're right now in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. I mean, it's just been incredible. The kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. And that's what this is all about. These kids are receiving the shoebox for the very first time in their lives. They're not just receiving toys. They are receiving Jesus Christ in their hearts. With a simple gift box, we get to share the love of Jesus Christ to these children. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. I want the children of the world to know that God has not forgotten them, that God loves them, cares for them, that he sent his son from heaven to this earth to take our sins. Every box makes a difference. Every box counts. Every person has packed a box. I just want to say thank you. This one so much. Thank you, God. Volunteers around the country love being a part of Operation Christmas Child. Hi, guys. I'm so excited that I'm doing Operation Christmas Child. Let's see what's inside. There's bandanas, a shirt, a stuffed animal, a soccer ball, a picture, and a letter. Dad has dental hygiene. Go make a soup box. Thanks for watching. Bye. I think Operation Christmas Child is really fun because we get to help other people around the world grow in the knowledge of God. It is a wonderful opportunity to teach kids how to serve others in a really tangible way. Churches are doing big things with Operation Christmas Child. Everybody out there who packs shoe boxes, they are spreading God's love. It's families, it's churches, it's hundreds of thousands of volunteers that help make Operation Christmas Child so successful. We couldn't do it without them. With this box, they do get the gospel story. They do hear about Jesus. It has maximum impact in the worldwide kingdom of Christ. I mean, what better thing could you do than be involved in fill shoe boxes? boxes are collected. Processing centers around the country prepare them for the journey ahead. Every box is an opportunity to make a difference in the life of a child, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. From 1 to 10, I'm about 12 right now. It's not just gifts, it's ministering the word and just showing Jesus to the little kids. 
It's a beautiful thing. I'm really excited to get to send these across the globe to little children and really make an impact on their life. Some of them go by train, some go by camels, some go by ships. These boxes go all over the world, and that is only the beginning. Jesus is the Son of God. After receiving the shoe boxes, the children will be invited to go to the greatest journey, which is a 12 lesson discipleship program where they learn about the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. After a child completes the greatest journey, they graduate and receive a Bible in their own language. God so loved the world. Because of Operation Christmas Child, we successfully plant three home churches in three villages. I'm so amazed of what God is doing because I know if Jesus will enter in the lives of these people, she also will come to their lives. Operation Christmas Child is the most spectacular program. It has started a fire, a fire so intense that it's immeasurable, and it's spreading around the world. When the light of the gospel is turned on, that changes everything. We're reaching the children of the world, one box at a time, one child at a time. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. Churches are being planted. Lives are being changed. Communities are being transformed. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. I would like to ask you to consider packing shoeboxes year-round. God will bless, and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen. amen. Wonderful to, to be about what God is doing. So um, this morning, if you haven't noticed, yeah, I'm not Ron. I'm going to do my best to stay right here. But I don't know if that's going to work. You guys online, again, I, I'm going to try my best to stay right. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> um, but we're going to be in the book of Haggai. And you're like, who? Who's that? Well, go to Jonah and go like four or five books. To the right, and you'll find them. You'll find Haggai. We're going to read Haggai chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Yeah, and again, just uh, continue to pray for Pastor Ron. Again, he's been sick. And pray for that. And uh, thank you for the warm welcome. Um, maybe after I preach, you might not want to clap because <laughs> you did before. But again, thank you. I love the opportunity, again, to be in here and sharing with you, the people of God, what God wants from us. And, and what God has for us, and, and what direction God is sending us. And so if you're there in the book of Haggai, again, 
I'll give you some time to get there. It's not a, not a book that we preach out of often, but again, I love, um, again, talking and preaching from God's word. So if you will join me, if you're able to stand, um, we're going to read Haggai 1, 1 through 14. Take your time to get there again. I know it's not a <laughs> book we look at often. Will you join me? All right, here we go. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. The Lord of armies says this, These people say the time has not come for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. The word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses? while this house lies in ruin. Now the Lord of armies says this, think carefully about your ways. Think carefully about your ways. Church, are you you thinking carefully about what you do, how you walk? You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink, but never have enough to be happy. You put on clothes, but never have enough to get warm. The wage earner puts his wages into a bag with a hole in it. The Lord of armies says this, think carefully about your ways. Watch it, church. He said that twice in the, like, four verses. Think carefully about your ways. Then he says it again. Think carefully about your ways. Go up into the hills, bring down lumber, and build the house. And I will be pleased with it and be glorified, says the Lord. You expected much, but then it amounted to little. When you brought the harvest to your house, I ruined it. Why? This is the declaration of the Lord of armies, because my house house still lies in ruin, while each of you is busy with his own house. So on your account, the skies have withheld the dew, and the land is crops. I have summoned a drought on the fields and the hills on the grain, new wine, fresh oil, and whatever the ground yields, on man and animal, and on all that your hands produce. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shethel, the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak, and the entire remnant of the people obeyed the word their God and the words of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, so the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, delivered the Lord's message to the people. I am with you. This is the Lord's declaration. The Lord roused the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shethel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozakat and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. They began work on the house of the Lord of armies, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Will you join me in prayer? Father God, we pray, Father, for your words, for your words spoken to the prophets, for your words that are for us for a time like where we're in. God, again, we pray that your words, and we know that your words do not go without accomplishing their task. And Father, this morning again, we ask that again, as we begin and as we study your word, God, that you would teach us, that you would show us truth of who you are and of who we are, and God, move us to the place where you want us to be. Father, we love you, and we're so thankful for your word. May it nourish us. May we be who you've called us to be. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So would you have a seat? Interesting, when I was in a seminary. I, I love the Old Testament prophets. I love listening to and going over and studying the Old Testament prophets, but I had a, had like a love-hate relationship, kind of like I have with my Texas Longhorns. I love them because I'm from Texas and I went there, but I hate how they're playing. I have a love-hate relationship with, with, with Old Testament prophets because this is what usually happens in the minor prophets. I love it because God uses people, uses one person, and he changes the course of nations. He changes all these things, but the problem is he has to send one because there's a problem with the people. It, there's a problem with the people of God, and he sends a prophet to say, you, you, you forgot who you were. You, you, you've forgotten where I've called you. You've forgotten the task that I put before you. You are, you are off track. And so it's interesting as we look at Haggai that that's really not the case. Usually God, when, when you get to a prophet, a prophet says, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Um, I, I'm, I'm dogging you because of your apostasy. You're not doing this, you're not doing that. But, but that's not his issue. His issue with them is not that they're not doing something, it's that they got things out of order. 
again, we, we don't know much about Haggai. He, he talked about he, he, he's in the time of Ezra. Again, this, about the same time that prophet was talking. And, and, and I want you to know where the nation of Israel is. They've just come back. They've been back from captivity about 15 to 20 years. They're back in their homeland. They were taken away because God judged them. And now they're coming back to their homeland. And they've been there for 15 to 20 years. And the temple still is not bit, built. That's what he says in verse 2. The Lord's army says this. These people say, these people say, funny. What's he usually call the people of Israel? It's okay for you to talk to me. What does he usually call the people of Israel? My people. My, my people. But, but does he say my people here? No, he says these people because they've forgotten who they were. These people. It says, these people say the time has not come for the house of the Lord to be rebuilt. The word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruin? He says, huh, the temple isn't built, but your house is looking good. The temple isn't built. And we're thinking, that doesn't mean that, that we need to get into a building program here, that, that we need a new building. The, the temple was where God resided. The temple is where you went to find and to grow and to be who God called you to be. And here's what he tells them. He, he says, you are taking care of you, but you're missing the thing that's most important. You're missing me. You're missing who I am. You're missing growing in who I've called you to be because you forgot who you were. See, we have to go back. We, every time that God has an encounter and he gets his people, we got to remember why. God called them out so that the world and people would be blessed because of them, because they're God's people. They're supposed to look different and they're supposed to act different because they are different, because they're God's people. See, and, and he tells them that. Again, they, they come back. And for 15 to 20 years, they are building their own house. They have taken care of them, but they've forgotten God. They've forgotten who God is. And, and, and in another version, it says, well, well, the time's not right for us to build God's house. The time's not right. Who in here is married? Raise your hand. Who in here has kids? Raise your hand. So for marriage and when you had kids, the time was perfectly right, correct? Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You're shaking your head. What, what, what do you mean? The time was not perfectly right for you to get married. And the time wasn't perfectly right for you to have kids. And so the question is, again, if you're waiting for a perfect time to do what God's called you to do, guess what? It ain't coming. If you're waiting for the perfect time to be who God has called you to be, keep waiting. I remember, I remember when I asked my beautiful wife, Jennifer, to, to marry me. I remember, I said, I need to do this, I need to do this. Well, I haven't done this, and I haven't done this, uh, so I guess I'm not getting married. And she's asking me, so do you want to be with me? I, I said, so, yeah, but, but I got to get all these things in order. I, I got to have it perfect. And she said, if you're looking for perfect, you might as well forget it, because I look at you every day. <laughs> 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 no, she didn't say that, she didn't say that. But, but if you're waiting for, for all the ducks to line up in a row, uh, again, I counsel people that are getting married. I'm like, okay, I got to have this, and, and I got to have this, and I'm talking to people that are having babies, and I got to have this, and I got to, look, it, it's coming. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? But if you're looking for it to be the perfect time, <sighs> keep waiting. Church, if, if you're looking for the perfect time for, for God to, 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 again, for you to continue your growth and who God has called you to be, for you to continue to be who God has called you to be, if you're waiting for the perfect time for that to happen, you're going to keep waiting. And that's what he says. He, he has a charge against them. You, you guys are waiting. Well, why are you waiting for the perfect time? Because the perfect time is not coming. But you are taking, your houses are good. Like you paneled your houses. You didn't just build it. You didn't just, well, I'm just going to 
just barely make it. No, I'm going to make it really good, and I'm going to take some serious time, and I'm going to put panels on it, and I'm going to do all this stuff because I forgot who I was. And, and so maybe what, what are some of the reasons maybe that they forgot who they were and they forgot God? Well, again, I don't want to. They're just lazy. Yeah, I want to do for me. Like, like I'm, I'm focusing on me. I want to do for me, and I want to do for me, and when I do for me, I don't have any time left to do for anybody else. Huh. Hmm. What has God called us to? What has God called us to give him? What we have left over? It's okay to talk. What we have left over? Like a leftover fruit, right? Like, like when I'm done doing what I want to do, God, you can have this. No, he says what? First fruit. Uh, oh, so, so he's the focus, and, and, and he's first, and, and I'm later, but he's first. See, they, see, they got lazy. They, they started worrying about them. Or, or maybe, again, if you go to Ezra, there, there are people beside them, and they're always messing with them. They're like, dude, y'all need to stop building these walls. You don't need to build these walls. They're always messing with There's opposition Church, there's going to be opposition to you doing what God's called you to do. There's going to be opposition to God for to you to grow to where God wants you to be. There is going to be opposition. And I, here's what happens in the world in America. When we get opposition, especially in the church, we go, well, that's not what God wants me to do. It's too hard. It's too hard. Name me something that's really good that doesn't take effort. All you people that raised your hand that were married. It's really easy to get married, right? You're, you are great and your spouse is great, correct? Yeah, you better say yeah. Man, you better say yes and wife is going to say no because that's the truth. No, but, but, but it's not perfect. You have to work at it because it matters. Hmm. B- because, again, it's the first Fruit. God, I want to give you, but, but, but again, their mind was on them, and then there's opposition, and then they're like, well, let me do the things that matter to me. Let's make stuff. Again, they said these panel houses, they look good. There's material possessions. There, there's stuff that makes them and it look good, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're looking good. So we forgot about you, God, because what we have, we don't need you. Huh, church? Is that ever us? God, I'm desperate. I need something. Uh, The pandemic. Oh, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do for you. But when I'm good, eh? Yeah, God, I I might give you something. I I might show up to church one, one Sunday a month. Oh, oh, my kids struggling. Man, I'm gonna be there Sunday. I'm gonna be there Wednesday. I'm gonna be there all the days, God, because, because again, I'm gonna borrow with you. I'm going to barter with you. When, 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 when I show up and do all this stuff, then you do your stuff, right, God? Mm. Hmm. We started worried about their material, and their material looked good, so they're like, eh, I don't care about God. Again, the temple was where God stood. It, it's about them growing. It's about the relationship with God growing. It's about them maturing in the process of who God has called them to be. Because, again, we got to go back to why they, God called them out, why he sent Abraham. In the, so that nations will be blessed through you. So that nations will be blessed through. So that not that you get everything, not that it looks good on you, so that nations will be blessed through you and that I, God, will get the glory. That I, God, that's why God's people, again, notice, this book is to God's people. This book is to the people of God. See, again, that's why I go, I got this love-hate relationship with, with the minor prophets. Man, I love it because he's going to use them to change, but I hate it because God's people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. We're missing out. We're not doing what God has called us to do. And, and that's his charge against them. And then he says, now the Lord of armies says this, think carefully about your ways. See, one of the things that, that, that 
this pandemic has done for me is, and has done for a lot of us is it slowed us down. Dude, we were running and we were doing this and we were doing that and we were doing this and God just slowed us down. I think that's what he, be, 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 be. Think carefully about your ways. When was the last time that you had a chance to look at your life? Sit down and look and see what you're doing, what God's called you to do, and to sit and look. Hey, careful, not, not, a, not a passing glance, to, to, to look carefully at how you are living and what that looks like to and for God. He, he tells them. He says, take a look at your life. Take stock of where you're at. Take stock of what's going on. Take stock of what's going on around you. And then he gives them some, uh, some suggestions or, or, or some, some, let me tell you what's happening in your life. You have planted much but harvested little. You eat but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink but never have enough to be happy. You put on clothes but never have enough to get warm. The wage earner puts his wages into a bag and a hole is in it. Hey, you're doing all this stuff but it's not <laughs> fulfilling you. See, see, see you're about your, your, your focus, you're about you, and, and you're living in a way that's not honoring me, and look where it's gotten you. Church, how does living not for God? How, wh where has it gotten you? Or, 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 look, be, 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 take time to take stock of what you're doing and see where you're at and where you're going and what God is or question mark or is not doing. And, and if you are a person of God and you understand that God is in control, that you look around and you go, I haven't planted, I, I, I'm not getting much from my harvest, I'm not satisfied I'm not happy. The, the money's growing out. Huh, must be just a hard time. Maybe God's trying to get your attention. D maybe, again, I'm not saying that's always. That's not always the case. But maybe God is trying to get your attention, church, because he's after you, because he wants you to bring him glory and for others to come to know him. That is who you are, church. Notice again, this is, this is to the church. He, he's talking to the church people. Be careful. Think about your ways. Think about what you're doing. Think about where and what you have been doing. Church, when was the last time you thought about you and God? Well, I think about it every, I think about it every Sunday when I come to church. Mm. You think on Monday? Maybe maybe Friday? maybe Saturday morning, that you ponder, what, what am I doing? Where am I at? And, and just like God, he tells you where you're at. And then in verse 7, the Lord of the army says this, think carefully about your ways, reminds him of this. And he says, here, here's how you're going to fix it. Here's how you can change where you're going and where you're going to end up. He says, go up into the hills Bring down lumber and build the house, and I will be pleased with it and be glorified. He says, go up. S some of you have noticed I I'm not as big as I used to be. I've lost a couple of pounds. It just came off, like, so anybody out there that's lost weight, it just comes off, right? Oh, yeah. You don't have to do any work. That there, you don't have to get any motion. You don't got to change anything that you're doing. You just, you just sit and osmosis, it just runs off. See, see he tells them, he, he says, you're going to have to get in motion. If you're going to grow with God, if you're going to mature, if you're going to be the person that God has called you to be so that you can be the light for other people to see, you got to move. You can't sit in the same place and stay and expect things to change. You can't. If you sit in the same place and you expect things to change, you're nuts. <laughs> because it's not. It's not. Ask, I, I can ask my teenager, okay, I got a test. 
I need to study. But I'm going to sit here and watch TV, and then I'm going to take the test on Monday and hope it works. But I'm not going to put any work. I'm not going to study. I'm not going to take good notes. I'm not going to do what I need to do so that I can move. I'm just going to hope it happens. See, that, that's how, I don't know how we got in this mindset of being who God called us to be and growing, that we just sit and we come in the church and, osmo, and it gets in and then it changes us. Like we don't have to do anything. There, there's no movement on our part. There, there's no movement. There's no anything. We just sit, take in, and then we're different. Really? What do you do? You, you got to move. You can't sit in the same place and then in a year go, man, I'm in the same place because you haven't moved. He, he told them, you got to get up. You got to get up and go. He tells them to get up, go up into the hills and bring down the lumber. Not only do you have to move, it's going to take work. He says, get up, go up and bring down. If we're going to build this temple, you're going to have to move and you're going to have to put forth some energy, some work. Ooh. I don't want to work for God. I, again, God's not calling you to work for him. Work to understand and to grow and to be more mature and to, to, to grow to be the person that put in effort. Put in effort, church. Are you putting in effort? Are you doing the things that God has called you to do? Again, I love it. I, this is so funny. Again, I, I'm like, Ron tells me at the end of the week, hey, you might be preaching, so we're not doing Jonah. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Literally, we talked about Operation Christmas Child, which is about doing what God wants you to do so that other people might find it, might find him. That Are you involved? Again, this is not an Operation Christmas Child push. This is just a push that just hit me. Are you doing something? That's going to bring God glory? That may take some effort on you. You have to get up. You have to go shopping. You, you got to get the right stuff. You got to put it in the box. You got, you, you got to do something. But look at this. My, I'm looking at the video going, God, that's awesome. That, that, that's, that's, that's a ready-made example of doing what God's called you to do that puts in work. It takes your money and it takes your time. You got to get a box. You got to spend your money. You got to send it. You, you got to do something. You got to put in some work over a period of time. Again, not to because to be saved, but to be the person that God has created you to be so that others might know God. You got to remember the reason. You got to remember why. You got to remember the why and not just the what. Are you studying the Bible? Great. Are you putting it in action? Oh, I got to do that. Are you going to small groups? Yeah. Am I sharing my story? I got to share with people. Well, again, God has put us there so that we can go. We, notice, notice not you. We can go so that we can look more like God so that more people can go. There is a God in heaven. I need to get him. I need to find him. And he's chasing after me. And I need to get with him because that's what God has called us to do because he wants us to be in a relationship. And I, me, Christian, I can show you because this is what he did in my relationship. And let me tell you about it. But if you're sitting in the same place and you're not moving, they're going to go, I don't want that. Or are you doing those things that help you to grow and who God has called you to do? Bring down the lumber and build the house. If you're building God's house, and you can only build one house at a time, are you building your house? Like, if you're building God's house, which he's called them to do, then they got to stop building theirs and focus on God. But, like, they got to remember who they are. They, they got to remember what God has called them to. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you were bought at a price, so glorify God with your body. You were bought at a price. 
You were bought at a price to glorify God. See, he's trying to help them to, to reorient themselves to God being the issue. About God being the issue. Not first place in life. We, we're, we're, we're going through a we're going through the study of the I am statements of Jesus, and, and we got to John 14, 6. It says, I am the, the way, the truth, and the what? Life. And the what? Life. I am the way, the truth, and, and first in your life. No, you, you, you're the life. Jesus is the li- is, is Is your motivation, the reason why you get up in the morning, the, the thing that, that you do that gives you life? Is it doing what God has called you to do, which is giving him glory? Like, is that the motivation of, no, I, I play in the band, but, but, but my band playing is to give God glory so that God can be glorified and people can come to him. I, I work at an insurance company, but, but, I, but I work at an insurance company so that I can give God glory and so that people can know who God is. I, I'm a nurse. I, I'm a nurse in a hospital, but, but, but I do it to give God glory so that people can know who he, is it your life or is it just something you do? Is it your life? And I will be pleased with it and be glorified. See, see, your eyes went off. At the beginning, their eyes are on them and their houses and how that works. And this is going to take me time and, and this is going to take me energy. And, and, and now God says, hey, go up, spend some energy, work at it, and then give me and watch me be pleased with who you are and be glorified. What do we want to hear when we cross over Jordan? Do what? Well done. Well, 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 well sat. No, he, well, 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 well sitting around and hoping things change. Well, 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 well done. Done means you have to do something. Well done. My, my, my faithful servant who's given me glory and has been running after me. And that's the motivation of your heart. Again, I do this other thing. But the ultimate thing is you used to be a football player that played from uh, Florida. He's a quarterback, left-handed. And he got to the NFL. And over and over, he'd talk about Jesus. He he's, wasn't the greatest football player, but see, that's not what he was after. <laughs> he wasn't after being the greatest football player. He was after, oh, ah. Uh, I got a place that I can talk about Jesus, I'm in. And, and, and I'm going to talk about Jesus every time I get on the football field, every time I do this, every time I do that. Because, because being a Christian wasn't, he wasn't a football player that happened to be a Christian. He was a Christian that happened to be a football player. Huh. Are you a Christian Are you a student that happens to be a Christian? Or are you a Christian student? Like, like is Christ the thing? Are you a a mother that happens to be a Christian? Or are you a Christian mother? Like, is it the name that, that, that that you go because you know that it glorifies God and it does what you are called to do? Again, it's just like God. He tells them what to do. He tells them what to do. And then in verse 12, it says, Then Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, the high priest Joshua, son of Zedek, and the entire remnant of the people, obeyed the Lord their God and the words of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. So the people feared the Lord. They got moved and they changed. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, delivered the Lord's message to the people. I am with you notice God does this over and over hey some stuff that I need you to change but but guess what 
I am going to walk with you. Like, like I'm going to show you. Like, like I'm going to be there. Like, I'm going to give you the energy. Like, I'm going to, like, again, here's the thing that, I, that we struggle with sometimes. I'm like, okay, God, I got to put forth some effort. Yeah, but if you let me be the energy that gives you that effort, then it'll work. Again, if you let me be the energy that gives you that effort, but are you making the effort in God? Again, notice God said, I will be with you as you do what I've called you to do. See, God doesn't ever leave you alone. God doesn't ever have a plan and go, oh, how am I going to get them to do that? What energy are they going to have? Oh, right, I put, their, I put my spirit in them. Like Jesus lives inside of them. And if you allow Jesus to do this and to move them and to motivate, then, then, then it changes. Again, he says, I will be with you. They heard the voice of the Lord and they changed. Hmm, church. I got a question for you this morning. You hear the ramblings of a 40-ish guy up here yelling or, or talking loud? Did you hear the voice of the Lord? Because from the moments I've been up here, if all you heard was me, then I hate to fill you out, but you wasted your time. You should have been out watching and looking at the sea or watching some birds or doing something that's going to give you benefit. But if God spoke, uh uh-oh, well, then your time was well had. And what are you going to do with what he said? What are you going to do with what he called you to? What are you going to do with, with, with his impression on your heart of what he has said to you and what he's called you to do? Remember are you worried about your house? Or are you worried about God's? Are you worried about yours and what it looks like? Are you worried about God's? And just because it's hard, <laughs> just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not right. Huh? Why don't you ask Jesus that question? Why don't you ask Jesus that question? Going to the cross, hey, God, can you take this from me? Because that's really not, oh, not what I want, what you want. What? Wait wait a minute. They're all going to leave me. All the ones you gave me, they're all going to leave. They're going to scatter. They're going to, God, it's going to be hard. God, I don't know if I want to, oh, not what I want, but what you want. Hmm. Church, do you understand who you are? Not a rhetorical question. Church, do you understand who you are? (laughs) Who has God called you to be? Are you living in that? Do you need to reorient? Uh, Oh, 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 yeah, that's right. You got, you're not first in my life, your life. You, you, your, your life, and in life, God, I, oh, gosh, I, oh, and you are so well pleased. <laughs> and I'm giving you honor because it's not about me, but it's about you. Again, like I said, I, 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 I love, love hate. How, how he changed the course of the people, how they, how they rebuilt the temple, how, how they got to be where God wanted them to be. But again, it took God's man to say, hey, your house is good. What about God's? And I ask you the question, how's God's house? How is God's house in your life? Does it need to be repaired? Let's pray. Father God, God, we are blown away by your love, by your grace, and by your mercy. God, we're blown away by by just your care for your people, how you instruct them, how you move them, how you challenge them, 
how you challenge us. And God, you give us the answer. Again, God, that you provide for us, that you provide for us the strength to do the things that you've called us to do. God, you don't send us out there on our own. But God, we need to be, make careful thought of how we're living. God, when was the last time we looked in the mirror? When was the last time I looked in the mirror, God? Am I living how you called me to live? Or do I need to reorient it myself to remember that you are life? You are the reason why I get up. You are the reason why I do things, to give you glory so that others may come to know who you are. Father, I pray that your words, and I know if they are your words, they do not return void. God, I pray that in this room and, 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 and over the airways, God, that, that you have spoken to people and that they ha- have come to understand who you are. God, if they need to know you, God, may they meet me here at the front after. Or, or may they call and speak to one of our elders if they're online. God, if you, if you spoke to them and, and they see their need for you or, or, or they're, they're your people and they need to reorient and they, they have some prayers that they need to help, help them. God, I pray that they would, they would seek out your people online or in person so that they could be who you've called them to be. Father, it is time to get our house, your house, ready, not ours, because it's all about you and your glory. In your son's name we pray, amen. In 2 Corinthians, Paul reminds the people, he says, don't let the grace of God be in vain, for today is the day of salvation. God lifts us up for his glory. So let's stand together as we sing about the glorious day that he did work in our hearts and our lives. buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met I was breathing failures I tried to hide. It was my
I have a destiny that is yet awaiting me. My life's not over. A new beginning's just begun. I have a hope. I have a dream. God has a plan. It's not too hard, but it's too possible. trials may come, I have this hope. I will yet praise Him, my great Redeemer. I will yet stand up and give Him glory with my life. It's my darkness and turns it into light. I will yet praise Him, my Lord. stand up and give him glory with my life. He takes my darkness and he turns it into light. I will yet praise him, my Lord, my God. I will yet praise him, my great redeemer. I will yet stand up and give him glory with my life. He takes my darkness Praise Him, my Lord, my God. God's not done with us yet. There's still hope. Well, amen and amen. Was it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? 
Amen, amen. So again, I pray that if you haven't been to Life Group, I pray that you make your way there. There's some in the back. Uh, the teenagers are over there. Children are over there. Again, before we get released again to be on mission, uh, may your God, may God help you again to see where you are and to see where he wants you to be. God be with you. Amen, amen, amen.